All right, so let's start with an API that doesn't require a personal access token, just so that you can understand how simple it is to actually make a REST API call. So for this example, we're going to use CatFax API. So if you go to their GitHub, you'll see that they give a nice, simple documentation. The base URL for all endpoints is this, HTTPS, CatFact, that Heroku app dot com. And they have two endpoints available, the users and the facts. And just in case this is your first time working with APIs, all you really need to understand about endpoints at a very high level is that the different endpoints determine what information you're going to get. So in this case, they have two endpoints. They have slash facts, which they tell you will retrieve and query the facts, and slash users, which will get you user data. But underneath it, you will see that it says requires authentication. Usually that's in the form of a personal access token. In this case, and for this video, we're going to use VSTS to cover how to authenticate with a personal access token. But we will use this one to show how to just use uh, um, API and make general REST API calls. All right, so let's begin. So we'll start by copying and pasting this URL that they gave us as a default URL endpoint. We'll go open up PowerShell and we're just going to say URL base, right? Equals, paste it in here. And we're going to make another variable URL endpoint equals, we'll just make it an empty string. We'll go back over here. We want to use the fax endpoint so that we can retrieve query and fax. Go right back here, go in between, paste it in there, right? So let's just combine it into one. So URL base plus URL endpoint. The reason why we're doing it this way, by the way, is so that we can easily change up the endpoints. You know, in this example, we only have two endpoints, facts or users, but you could be using an API that might have, you know, 2000 endpoints. And instead of having to give a new URL every time, why not just pass a new endpoint while keeping the same base? So that's along the lines of, you know, the trailer of thought that I was going with. Obviously you can modify it any way you see fit. All right, so now we're gonna create the actual query. Um, I'm gonna start by making a response or a variable called response, and we're gonna use the invoke rest method. Um, we're gonna type in URI. We're gonna pass the URL that we just generated here. The method is just going to be get. We can cover HTTP request methods if required. Right after I finish generating this query uh, content type is going to be application json and headers is just going to be whatever your default header is okay so that's actually pretty much it we can just run this script right now the way it is and we don't see any values but if you were to actually highlight response run it you'll see that we do in fact get an object over here you see all the facts going inside other objects. So there you go. You got your API call. Okay, so before I move on, uh, two things we can really cover real fast is how you might want to, you know, access some of this information or even just display it for yourself. Um, pretty much there's two base ways that I like to do it. One is a for each loop. You could do for, you know, each item in response dot all. By the way, this isn't always going to be the option. It's obviously just because the object they return um, here, and then you could just type in item. So if you run it from here, you should see every single fact that they have all provided for us. The alternative to that is let's comment this out. The alternative to that is you just get your response. Pipeline that down to convert to, sorry, convert to JSON. So if you do it this way, let's clear this out. And you run it, you'll see it in JSON form. 
in the event that you might have um, you know objects within objects you can usually just do depth and say it's like three layers deep you could do four just in case and it would display you know the inner objects as well that's pretty much it so now we can move on to doing API calls with authentication all right so to make an API call with personal access token Obviously, you need a personal access token. So what we have here is we have a dummy project in Azure DevOps or VSCS. Um, if you go to user settings, you go to personal access tokens, you'll see the ability to make new tokens, right? They also have all, all these other options, SSH keys, alternate credentials, whatever. Um, again, we're using PATS. Go to new token, and if you take a look real quick, they'll give you exactly what rights that token should have. And they let you break it down pretty deep in to multiple roles. In this case, for speedy purposes, we're just going to hit full access and we're just going to call this guy test, right? Expires in 30 days. Doesn't matter because I'm going to delete it afterwards. Once you get that token, you have one chance to copy it somewhere. So make sure you copy it somewhere safe. Okay, so we'll go to the script now over here. And we're just going to make a new variable called pat equals the personal access token given but just for simplicity's sake and for get and set someone might you know just come across the script and read it and not know what pad is we'll say personal access token like this okay so we have that say so that's step one step two is just like before with the cat facts we need to get the base URL as well as the endpoints that we want to target for the URL so here we have um, Microsoft's documentation for VSTS. So we are going to target something called variable groups. I'm not going to get into detail for this because that's just so many things to explain here. But basically the point we want to take away from this is that they give you some sample, uh, some examples of how to build your query string. Um, and they also give a breakdown of the parameters. Right, so this is, especially if you're on the job, this is more along the lines of something that you'd see. So something more dry, not as fun as cat facts. Okay, so they give you this string. They let you know what your organization and your project should be. Um, in this case, let's go over here. Um, I'm just going to paste it here for the time being. In this case, we know if we go to, where is it? If we go to my project, you'll see that the project name is PowerShell REST API, which matches up over here. <clears throat> I'm sorry. I think I made a mistake. No, I was right. Yeah. Project name is PowerShell REST API, right? But the organization name, if we go back over here, the organization name is YouTube Vids. And inside this organization, we have a project called PowerShell REST API, right? So basically what you can do is you can grab these two values. You can go in here. Let's just paste it here. We know, actually you just paste it right over here. Okay, so you built your, your string, right? <clears throat> this is going to be your base URL. It's always going to be the same project. In this in this context and the um, endpoint is actually going to be not slash facts but it's gonna be this part over here so if we were to build this together now our URL should be matching up right so we have HTTP dev.azure YouTube vids partial API and then the actual endpoint itself over here perfect so we can delete this guy Okay, so step 2.5 is going to be to create the actual token pairing inside your script. So we're going to create a variable called token. Let's start by convert to base64 string text.encoding. I think I have too many parentheses here. over here 
too. Sorry. I get bites. We'll pass along here a user and a personal access token. And okay. So, you know, the reason why it's like this is usually your credentials is going to be your username and then your user password. But in this case, um, since we're using a personal access token, your username can be uh, empty. Um, so it should be fine, but just in case it throws an error, we'll just make an empty user um, over here. There you go, solves that problem. Okay, so the third and last step here is pretty much creating a header to let the call know that we are going to be using a personal access token. Earlier we had, you know, said that we're using the default header. Now we're making something outside of the default. So let's create a header variable. And in here, we're just going to say authorization equal instead of string basic token. There you go. All right. So before we run this, uh, we should cover what we're expecting to see. So we're going to go to um, Azure DevOps and basically, you know, like we said, it's targeting variable groups. We want to see what variable groups are available inside this project. So we're going to go to pipelines and library. And if you go to the library, you'll see that I created a variable group called REST API Video 2020, right? Um, in here, we have two variables, sample01 value hello, um, sample02 value world. Okay, so before we run this, let's get rid of this for each loop. Uh, we'll just deal with the output from converting it to a JSON. Okay, so let's give it a shot. And sure enough, we get exactly what we wanted. We see that the project name, I'm oh, sorry, the variable group name is REST API Video 2020. Um, we have two variables in it, sample one, sample one, two. We can't see what those values are because they're objects within objects. So uh, as I mentioned before, we have to use the depth parameter. So let's go ahead and do that. Uncomment this, and run it again. And sure enough, this time we see right here, let's scroll up a little bit. We see right here that it's gone deeper into it and it shows you not just the variable name, but the variable value of hello and world. All right, so that pretty much wraps it up. As always, there are links to the scripts inside GitHub. Um, if you need any help, there will probably be much better comments there than inside the video. So hopefully you learned something useful. Um, and feel free to leave a like, comment, or subscribe to help support me. And have a great one. Take care. And just in case you're wondering, I do plan on making a follow-up video covering the other HTTP methods such as post, put, whatever, what have you. Everything that's in this list that you see here. Um, so stay tuned for it. And I feel like this is just a great introduction video to using REST APIs with PowerShell in general. So again, hopefully it helped you and that you learned something.